and deck. Permission to go ahead and release? Yes, go ahead. I know I've said this before, but once you zoom in, <laughs> there's like yeah. a million things to see. It's great. Well, you can even see the lobster's little feeder antennas. Aw. Little feathers. Oh, yeah. So that's is how that it, mostly how it eats? Yeah. It doesn't use the claws for anything? <gasps> to hunt? I'm not sure. Nope. Just to, to just battle. Just to uh, haunt our dreams. <laughs> 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 it's so they could be more terrible. sensory. Yeah. Oh, you know, right, right. They're using their claws to hold things to their mouth. It's the but they fuzziest use looking taste. squat lobster we've seen. Hey, are we done with this guy? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. so. I could watch it for a while, but let's be done with it. <laughs> the stunning shot. So, theoretically, this would be the third sighting of this uh, jelly. Yeah. Right. Ever. Ever? Ever. Ever. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. So we saw one last week. Where was the first sighting? Uh, Not like okay. I think it was about eight years, years ago. Okay. Okeanus Explorer. Yeah. Megan, you remember what this thing was called? It's a Narco Medusa. Narco, Narco Medusa. Medusa Bathy Chorus, more specifically. So beautiful. So I mean, you can really oh. see there that modified frill, as we call it, is a fin attachment that's used to bring them up in the water column, believed to avoid predators and to find new new spots on the seafloor with lots of food. Sea cucumbers are super cool that they eat with these paddle-like appendages in front of their face that are kind of like sticky paddles that they put down in the sediment and then bring up into their mouth like you were licking off food off your palm, just like palming your food and stick it in your mouth. You can see a couple of those tentacles there in the left. Looks like this one's also got some kind of uh, mm -hmm. associate who's just spinning out of out of view now, but it might have had a parasitic copepod or something similar uh, on its back. So cool. Look at it. It's all its feeding tentacles tucked in, except those little tubes that are coming around to its mouth. Hello, friend. Great flying, Dan. Aww. All curled up, like it's ready to take a nap. Well, yeah. Or maybe it's just being shy. Oh, oh, aerodynamic, oh. hydrodynamic. It's coming right for us. <laughs> Whoa, that's a cool view. So cool. Whoa, you are such a beautiful oh. creature. Oh, it really is coming right for us. Deep. Ah, uh, Yoda worm. <laughs> Yay. What is this? So an acorn so, worm? Did you say acorn worm? It's so. Yeah, it's a type yeah. of acorn worm. Uh, I believe this might be in the genus uh, Yoda. Yeah, these are really nifty looking creatures. Yeah. So what's, is that like the track coming from behind it or is that like? Yep, that's its, uh, that's its poop basically. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. So just like the sea cucumber, it ingests sediment, processes it through its intestine and then leaves a circular Looks fecal right trail. Right All right, let's start getting those species IDs out. <laughs> let's go. Um, we're in kind of a really diverse area for sponges it looks like. Oh yeah, and there is a yellow coral. Can you maybe pan to the left a little bit? Okay, so this looks like a plexorid. plexorid. Uh, we haven't seen this type of coral yet, I believe. Tunicate, oh my god, this is a great shot. Tunicate in the background as well. Mushroom coral, of course, in the back too. And a bamboo, a branched bamboo. And that stock sponge. Are these demo sponges or glass sponges? These, so these are all glass sponges. From what I can tell, this dive has really been all sponges. So really cool, neat little rock right here. Ooh, this looks like one of those flying squirrel suits. A oh, weird one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen this one before. It's playing dead. <laughs> it's munching on something. Oh. It Face has plant. a little oh. urchin. It's holding a small urchin. <gasps> oh. So I still think this is probably some type of um, terraster. Uh, it's probably a hymenaster, but it's a little bit different coloration, and I don't know how much the coloration varies on these, but I think this is some type of hymenaster, which is a, still a type of slime star. Oh, a slime star. But this is not the ones I would say that look all that normal to me. Whoa. Full zoom. So it does not appear to be eating the urchin, at least not in this moment. It might be, it might be attempting to eat it, 
and is having trouble negotiating <laughs> through its spines. <laughs> or it might have just run over it by accident. I feel like is, it's showing off for us. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, to, to a terrestrial organism, it certainly is. <laughs> That's a big one. That's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Jeez. Ah, sorry. And what is that thing again? It's a solitary hydroid. Come down a little faster for me. Does look very alone out here. So that little so flat out there. orange thing inside, that's also part of it? I am not sure. When we get, after we get a second of prettiness here, I'd like to zoom in closer because that looks a little weird to me. Right. So because this is a hydroid, it's part of an Iberian family, correct? Yep. Go ahead, Daryl. Wow. Is that an anemone inside of a hydroid? Oh my gosh, look at that gorgeousness. It's, that's certainly different. What What are we looking at in the center there? Like it looks like sunflower seeds, except clearly not. <laughs> yeah, so looking at, looking at my reference pictures, it is, I've, all, I've seen that mainly retracted, but that is part of the, the organism. This oh, is a Corymorphidae. Okay. Um, Just never seen that, the central tentacles extended that far before so those are tentacle uh, so all of those are just different variations of tentacles so we've got the outside tentacles the bright orange tentacles and then the little tentacles that look like sunflower seeds i don't know enough about the anatomy of this but yeah i, I believe all three of those are parts of the organism it's just chilling there like hello Cups highlights all the time got gotcha. you <laughs> love it oh, that's cool Chana what? Chana cops. Cops. Deep in contemplative thought. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Staring into the void. <laughs> We've all had that day. Yeah. I wanted to be a shark when I grew up. And here I am. <laughs> Fun fact, all the big Chana copses are girls. What? The Males have um, really extreme sexual dimorphism. They're small and parasitic. And so all the big ones. Interesting. Oh, so all the big wow. chana cops are female. Mm -hmm. Hey, girl. Thanks for bringing the facts, Megan. Right? <laughs> Still there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, carry Stop on. Stop moving at all. Cool how uh, she's got her fins kind of wedged what? in there. Right? Yeah. Standing on firm rocks. ground. Yeah. I think, um, Hunting? Mm. Waiting. Waiting for. Just waiting. 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 Like she's chilling. waiting for. Just waiting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! She just ate. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, go back. Go back. <laughs> what? Go what? back. Are you serious? That I, yeah, her like whole jaw yeah. extended out. Wow. Oh, we missed it. That was Dude, amazing. What? Blink and you missed it. Okay, folks at home, rewind. That was rewind, awesome. rewind, yeah. highlight, highlight. Contest right here. Oh. Oh, oh, there you oh, go. oh, oh, she's tensing. Gonna go for it, gonna go for it. Oh, wait, oh. wait, wait. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no. there's oh, the lure. Oh, the lure. Oh. That was pretty neat. So we got a really high density, our high diversity community here. Um, see just about most of the major taxa here. We've got Chrysogorgias in multiple flavors. We've got Primnoids in multiple flavors. We've got Paramaricias. We've got Anthemastus. We've got what, probably a couple bamboos behind us. So we've got a whole host of different things here. So we're gonna take an eDNA sample here. Brian, key question of the whole expedition. Why do you think this spot has so much life? This particular spot, I don't know. That is one of the things that scientifically drives me crazy. It, I, uh, I don't have a really good mechanistic answer. And the big picture an answer is probably the current here is ideal for corals, um, broadly. But what that actually means in, there, in terms Fold of it. periodic flow, steady flow, speed of flow, you know, all those kind of things I don't have answers for. Um, and that is something that, you know, I, will, I would say it's one of the major drivers of some of my research questions is trying to understand that particular question of why this rock and not that rock. Uh, can you turn on the pen and tilt light? Or, uh, what niskins do we have? Niskin 4 looks good. 
That's a good Atalanta shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as, as we're moving through this um, just really impressive um, coral field, it's a good time to remind people that the area we're operating in right now is uh, part of the U.S. exclusive economic zone uh, north of the U.S. territories of Palmyra and Kingman Reef. And uh, this area currently is under consideration for a proposed National Marine Sanctuary. Um, and the public comment period to get um, people's input closes, I believe, June 2nd. Uh, and the link is on Nautilus Live. Um, and there's a write-up on nautiluslive.org about what that means and, and ways to participate. Um, but this is a really relevant time period for us to be here um, collecting this data, which is going to get fed right into um, the federal decision-making process about whether this area should qualify as uh, a new National Marine Sanctuary. Those are so pretty. It's an Atalanta shot there. <coughs> yep. Yeah. I don't know, Katie, you want to flag that Atalanta shot for a highlight? I sure can. 